just got off my bus in the town of Gotemba. Um, I was supposed to stay a little bit closer to Tokyo. I've gone about two hours outside of Tokyo. I was supposed to stay a little bit closer, but I ended up falling asleep on the bus and then got off at the wrong stop. Uh, the idea was like hitchhiking in actual Tokyo would have been completely impossible. I don't think I'd have been lucky enough to find another bus driver to, to take me the whole way again. Now, what I'm trying to do is work out the best way for me to get to Fuji. I'm going to Fuji City. Mount Fuji is over there. I will show you it, but it's behind a load of clouds, so you can't really see anything at the minute. Um, who knows? Let's just try and find out where I am first. truck, I think. Eh? Uh, Fuji. Fuji should be. Okay. Must. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> A truck driver called Shinji took me all the way to Fuji and even gave me a brand new pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses as a gift. My first day back on the road after a week off had been a fairly simple one and I was excited about making my way further south and taking another step closer to finishing my trip as well as getting the opportunity to see one of Japan's most famous landmarks. No, no, no. Are you sure? Arigato Don't worry Thank you very much. Sayonara. Huh? Hi. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm staying in a hotel tonight because I couldn't find anyone to let me uh, couch surf at theirs. But I think I have like a really proper Japanese style uh, room, which could be interesting. Um, so I'm just, there it is, 333, half the devil. on the pillar. Always a nice touch. A trip up to the hotel's rooftop foot spa in the morning offered something of a spectacular sight ahead of an early departure to make sure I got to my next destination, Nagoya, in good time. Good morning. Look at that behind me. Um, yeah, Mount Fuji has come out to see us this morning, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm getting further and further south anyway. Um, pushing on now, over halfway I think. It's, uh, it's going really well, so I just need to, need to get out there and find a decent place to get picked up this morning. I didn't have to wait long for my first trip of the day, with the family allowing me to join them on their sightseeing trip, before two guys one who claimed to be famous on Japanese social media for pulling funny faces took me the rest of the way. I spent the day in Nagoya taking in the world's largest planetarium before meeting a student called Bilal who let me stay at his flat for the night. Wow, Bilal. this is a bit embarrassing. Can you give me just five minutes? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I just wake up. <laughs> that evening was followed by one of the better days I had hitchhiking on my way to Kyoto, with a young couple first taking me to visit a castle, then an old Japanese folk musician taking me the rest of the way, insisting we listen to his music for the entire two hour journey. <laughs> Economy syndrome. Right. <laughs> you know? Economy class syndrome. No. No? 
and a small place, yeah. no move. Ah, okay. <laughs> I never heard of that. So this is you, no? your music. Oh, this is my teacher. Your teacher. Yeah. Me. This is you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story. A story. I arrived in Kyoto to find my guest house was hosting a party at which an Australian man who called himself Dr. Robot was playing a synthesizer. The night ended with a bit of a sing-along before I made the most of two days I'd booked in the city to break up my journey and explore more of the country. the street as you do um, and then uh, these guys are just hanging out feeling absolutely miserable from somewhere or other I've caught some sort of mad lurgy um, my eyes are all leaky and you can't really tell can you um, yeah my face feels all gross I was downstairs because the the Wi-Fi up here isn't brilliant and I was trying to plan a good place to get picked up for tomorrow and there was this this woman was in the it's like a living room sort of place where people can sit I was explaining to her that tomorrow I need to go to Kyoto um uh, sorry no tomorrow I need to go to Okayama and that my plan is that I'm hitchhiking the whole way I can't buy myself a bus ticket no matter how much I would really want to and so she uh, she she bought me one. She went out and came back and she's bought me a bus ticket to Hiroshima for tomorrow night. So I now have free travel to Hiroshima and free accommodation for tomorrow night. She's bought me a night bus ticket, a sleeper bus ticket. So it means that I. It means that tomorrow I don't have to go to Okayama. The day after, I don't have to hitchhike from Okayama to Hiroshima. It means that I can just go straight from here to Hiroshima overnight. And for that, I am ever, ever, ever so grateful. I think. 
in the morning. Um, I had about seven hours on the bus, of which I slept maybe two. But I can't check into my can't check into my hotel room for another seven hours, and I still feel absolutely dreadful. So I just have seven hours to spend on my own in Hiroshima. It's a pretty big city, but I'm just absolutely no interest today. I took the ferry to Miyajima Island, where I once again got to mingle with wild deer and saw the Itsukushima floating shrine. I then returned to the city, where I helped some local kids learn English and learnt about the city's historic importance. Uh, do you have a time? Uh, yes, sure. Okay. I'm Takeda. I'm Rota. I'm Yumeka. I'm Yumeka. I'm Yumeka. I'm Yumeka. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Ryan. 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 Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We are elementary school students. Okay. We are from Koch. Oh, okay. Where are you from? I'm from England. England. Do you like Japan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What Japanese food do you like? I like noodles. Noodles? Yeah. Oh. Thank you very much. This is chili made from origami. Oh, thank you very much. A memorial to my right is the Children's Peace Memorial. And it was raised uh, in remembrance of a young girl called Sadako. She lived uh, one. 1.6 kilometers away from the epicenter of the, uh, the atomic bomb and she developed acute leukemia about uh, just a few years after, after the bomb and as a result of the radiation and she believed that she would get better if she folded 1,000 of these paper cranes. She believed that that would make her better and heal her but she, she died after eight months in hospital and this memorial was um, erected after her classmates fundraised in order to do it and there's loads and loads of head cranes hung um, from in these cabinets all around this, the centre of the monument. It's really quite a beautiful memorial, it's quite touching and it's it was raised to remember not just her but to remember all, all children who were killed by the, uh, the atomic bomb which was dropped here during, uh, during World War II. <laughs> Reaching Hiroshima meant I'd almost made it to Kyushu, Japan's southernmost island. From there, I just had to make it to Cape Sata to complete my journey. Nevertheless, there were still robot dinosaurs, volcanoes, and plenty of lunacy for me to encounter before I could say that I had hitchhiked the length of Japan.